What brings most players to Adventure Quest Worlds? The items? The stories? Or is it the endless amounts of classes? When we were playing games as kids, we never asked ourselves why something is so much fun. A lot of the time, words can't describe why something is so entertaining. But I don't think that's the case for classes. Artix Entertainment is closer to showing us what the gameplay will be like for their newest game, AQW Infinity, a remake of Adventure Quest Worlds, but done right. The game's getting closer to a release date too, which means that the classes need to be done right. And better yet, they need to be fun. So I thought, why not show my version on how I would do classes? First off, we need to capture what makes the games special, and not some cheap copy of some other game. So let's look at some ways they did classes throughout the years. First, we have OG Adventure Quest. Mostly all classes have quests that must be done first to level them up. And once you've done that, you can get a higher tier of class. When reaching said level with said class, the game has items for classes that you've unlocked, adding to the progression of the game. Then we got Dragon Fable. The progression for how you get new classes is tied to DF's storyline. Most require you to train at a class trainer, so there's no ranking up, only unlocking skills. On top of that, classes have artifacts. Special items, when equipped, it changes the way the class plays, adds that extra layer of fun for the players. Not to mention, DF's provides more than just that, as classes can act as a profession like Angler, a fishing minigame. Okay, how do these classes play in the game? The older games play like this. You line up your buffs with your skills, then you proceed to do max amounts of damage. But what about AQW? Well, to start off, there's a lot to choose from, and most classes are not super hard to get. In AQW, the progression lies in getting the class. Then you have to choose what kind of class you need for said thing. Are you farming more than just one enemy? Or maybe you're trying to solo a boss. In that case, single target class is probably better fitted. Now let's make the scope wider and include other games to the mix. First off, we have World of Warcraft, a game I know better than any other. As you level up, you get more options, from how you play, to what you want to do, to how you do it. Each class plays a big role with the content in the game. Each class has a skill tree, with three specs to choose from. These specs act like artifacts in Dragon Fable. The whole leveling experience is the class progression, so when you hit max level, you fully understand the class. Depending what content you plan on doing will decide on how you play and how you customize your class talent points for the class tree. Final Fantasy 14. Your level is your class level and you have a quest line and a storyline that unlocks more skills for the players. Just like AE games, you can switch your class whenever you want. On top of that, you get armors and weapons that's designed around the classes themselves, but they're only for looks. Last but not least, RuneScape. I know, I know, it doesn't have classes, but it does have scaling. So we'll be looking at that. First off, there's a bunch of skills to level up, and most of them are tied to each other, like the mage skill needing runecrafting or the range skill needing fletching. Nothing feels mandatory to progress in the game, making it a very open progression system. All the games we just talked about does something right that the other one doesn't do. So we're gonna be keeping these in mind moving forward into the video. We know what makes something fun, but what parts of AQW classes aren't? The first thing that comes to mind is the fact that almost all classes, you just press skills off cooldown, and that's it. Feels as if you're not having an effect on the enemies, besides who can deplete each other's health first. It becomes very spammy gameplay, but what causes that? It's simple, class archetypes. AQW's classes try to do it all, and if it doesn't, no one plays it. There needs to be more than just healing, damage, and dodging, because if a class doesn't have at least two of these, it won't see play. It doesn't help that every class is like Inspector Gadget, making the player feel no different than anyone else. When you play a class, you need to know what you provide for the team, and what separates you from another player my version of classes. Before we start making our class system for AQW Infinity, we need to have things that are already in the game. We need good UI that shows mechanics, like casting bars, highlights when something procs, the basic stuff. We're also getting action combat for the new game, but we don't know what it will look like. In our version, it will be kind of like Diablo or Lost Ark. It won't be too crazy like those games, but crazy fun nonetheless. It will have simple telegraphing, simple timing for moving out of the way, and the ability to stop the cast bar from being cast, and the maps need to change during a boss fight. And lastly, it needs cued instance content. 
starter classes. Now we can start setting the stones for our class system. I love that you can switch classes whenever you want between battles. So we're keeping that. We won't just have four star classes when making a character. There'll be 12 now. Warrior, Mage, Rogue, and Healer, Pirate, Necromancer, Alden, and Guardian. Then Dragon Lord, Dragon Slayer, Star Lord, and Tacomancer. These are going to be the classes I'll be picking. Not that it matters. Class Quest Lines. Classes now have a quest line that you have to do to unlock skills. This will teach a player how to play the class and give them progression to work on while doing the main story. If the player chooses Dragon Slayer, he would end up with Galanoth as his trainer. He would teach you some of the basics until he sends you on your way to the main story. When you rank up, you go back to your class trainer to progress more. What this does is keep a sense of unlocking new classes, like Dragon Slayer from the Dragon Lair map. But this will add so much more personality than just walking up to an NPC. Unlocking classes. Now the other classes. Of course, we'll have artifact versions like DF that play a different role for said class. It won't be so much of an upgrade or a higher tier than the classes that you find along the way. Whether it be through the main story or the side story, this will open up the world and make it fun to play in said maps. Here's how it's going to work. Through the class quest line, you may get branching pathways. This will lead to class roles that you'll need for the class. Then there's classes that you'll see along the way. This is no different than adding a new class, but that doesn't mean that you must be at that level range, or that you need to be at that part of the story. Class balance. How will we balance classes, you may be asking. Good question. No class is left out. That's right. They all play a role in the content in the game. Any class that isn't really meant to be playable will now be just a class skin. Not taking up space in your inventory, but knowing Arctic's entertainment, they'll call skins classes anyways. You won't stop ranking your class at rank 10. For this video, we'll say rank 40 around there. You'll only have set amount skills that you can use, but you can switch them out kind of like Diablo. This will keep the gameplay simple while keeping it fresh. The gameplay loop. I could go on forever about this, but let's just see what the gameplay loop would play out like. Step one, you pick your class when making a character, making your decision based on what you like. Or maybe you see a class role that you can be later on, so you choose that one. Step two, you get introduced to your class trainer slash the tutorial for the game, meaning that there can be up to 12 different starting zones, but most likely the trainers will be paired up. Step three, after being taught the basics, like skills and how to change them, to what class role you want to choose and how to follow class quest line, you'll start going through the main story. And every now and then, you go do your class quests after ranking up. Step 4. You hit max rank with your class. You got new items, quest lines, all throughout ranking up. At this point, we can add things like grinds, weapons, armors, really anything. But some are tied to max level content, and others are tied to older content. Step 5. Anything that's a dungeon, trial, or anything that's instanced can be queued up. You can queue up and be put into a group. If you're doing older content, that means that you'll most likely be helping newer players. Step 6. Starting over. Yes, the main fun factor that starts to kick in. You want to play the new class or roles of the said class. You're rank 1 again, meaning that you have to play as a new, enjoying all the content again in an all new way. Not perfect. There is only so much I can put into a video. A lot of my points can't be fully conveyed, but that's okay. Because the idea of the video is to have fun. More importantly, to entertain you, the viewer. Even if that means I make you upset in my video, it still entertains you. Just not in the way you want it. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Till next time.